In this video we'll be trying to make a concrete mold from a STL file. In this video we'll be grabbing a free STL off the internet and trying to make it into a 3D mold we can just pour cement into and make an object repeatedly. It's quite a lengthy process so I've broken the video up into several, well half a dozen sections right. Uh, so check the show notes because there might be only one thing you're interested in. So aside from that, enjoy. So to make our design, we need to pick a, a good uh, item to try and make a cast from. And for some reason, I just had skulls on my head. So I went into, um, I've got a skull on my head. Went to Cults 3D and just had a look for skulls that would work. And uh, this one here looked pretty good. It's the perfect price for me and uh, it looks like it's quite a in the scheme of things it's quite a simple looking um thing to reproduce right uh so it's free so thanks and kudos to Makono for providing us i've got plenty of free items on cult 3d as well if you want to make any of my designs so what i want to do is just download this one uh locally and then we'll jump into Fusion 360 and um, try and make the mold. Okay, so we're in Fusion 360 now and we've downloaded the file. And I just want to import it into my workspace here. So we'll just click on Insert, Insert a Mesh because that's what it is. And just place it down. So this is the skull uh, provided in the STL. Looks, looks good enough. Yeah, so what I want to do now is make a copy of this and paste it again and just leave it in the same place and then we want this to um, we want to in uh, increase this by 20% uh, so <clears throat> we will then subtract the inner skull from outside of from the inside of this outer skull and then uh, we'll have a sort of a duplicate on the inside that we're going to pour the concrete into. So I'll just choose my outside one, press on S and type in scale. And now I want a 20% bigger, right? And there's our increased uh, scale. And then within there we've got the smaller one. So this is the one we're going to pour the concrete into when we make the mold. Um, when I made the other molds, I just made them out of blocks. Here's the old one here. And you can see just all this wasted material is just um, a huge amount of wasted material. It's just not going to use any of that. So in this process, we're just going to have a, a thin, well not thin, probably that thick going around the outside so you use half as much material when you're printing it. I mean it worked fine, it's just a complete waste of material, it's just not doing anything. So it's fine, so we're going to leave that for now. Now this is a mesh uh, which is different to the, to the solid. So if we pop into the solids, already in that toolbox, and we want to, what we want to do is we want to make these sort of, these flanges around the outside uh, because this is what the screws go to to clamp the, um, the mold together because we're going to clamp it together, pull the concrete in, let it set and then unscrew it and it comes apart. So uh, we'll just line it up and we want to find a good seam to um, create this, the flange on so we're just guessing here right so we, we'll go through and create a box And I think this line here is probably going to be a good line because when you're making molds, it's like making a sandcastle. You're going to pull it away from the object without any sort of grabbing the material because it'll just it'll break. And that's what happened here with this one because I had some restrictions here. When I pull it apart, I actually have to break the mold to get it out, which is hopeless. So this is just a two-piece mold. I had another one on the back and put it together, but. It couldn't um i needed another manifold going this way so i'll just draw my box here 
and just sort of roughly make the ten manifold ten wide, and then when I cut in half, it'll be five mils on either side, which will be plenty, right? It's obviously not wide enough, so we just extract them. So we click on this side, click on OK, click on here, click on extract, and just pull this out. Oops. To where it looks about right. OK, and then we extract, extract the other side as well. You just press E, click on the face and press E, or we'll go up and click on the uh, extract, the extrude tool on the top there. And it looks about right as well. So that's cool, and of course, we've still got a lot of material up here we don't need to um, print. So I'll just round the corners off. So I click on the corners and then click on fill it and we'll just push these down as far as we can. That's probably about right. And so the other thing I want to do is um, like I say for this one I just had two flat sides pushed together and it really needed a sort of a manifold here so I could pull it apart that way and that way. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is going to generate another manifold like this but sort of on an angle with the nose. So we'll create another box. And as wide as the other one. Make that 10 mil high as well <clears throat> and extract it out. Oops, wrong way. Let's click on that face. Okay, so I need that sort of on a bit of an angle. So what I'll do is I'll just tilt it slowly so the nose and the base here are sort of a bit of an angle so they can sort of come off the top and down the bottom or they can hook off to this nose. <clears throat> so I just grab that body and give it a bit of click on the move copy and just rotate it around until I'm sort of happy with it. Probably that looks about right. And then I will uh, join these two bodies to get out because I want them as one part. So we've got our manifold and we've got our two skulls. And we want to go back into the mesh editor because um, it's the easiest way to deal with meshes. You can convert these meshes into solids but unless you've got a supercomputer uh, it's a bit of a nightmare. So what I'll do is I'll just export this as a mesh and then I'll just oh, I don't even see this one anymore and I insert the new mesh which I just created and it looks identical right but it's not a um, it's not a solid anymore it's a mesh so we can do cool things. So now we've got the outer body and we've got the manifold and we want to join them together because we want them to be one object. So we click on this combine tool, we select the body and the outside skull. That's the other body. We click on join because we want them joined together and click on OK. 
and I'll think about it for a few seconds. <clears throat> but it's all done, so we've got one body here and the inside skull. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, remove, cut this inside skull from the outside of the, the outer skull. So we click on our combine tool again and we select over here, cut. So we want to, this body is our, um, this is our target body, what we want to take the insides away from. And then we click on the tool body and the tool body is in the skull. Cut. Uh, so now once we click OK, it'll skull out the inside of the skull. <clears throat> okay, so it's all done, it's cut out the middle, so if we, maybe even if we set the opacity to a lower value, yeah, we can see the skull within a skull. <clears throat> no problem is now it's, there's no way to pour the concrete in. So what we want to do now is we want to do a plain cut. So we click on this button here. This is the antibody. And then we select the cut, the, the cut plane. And we can see in here it's this one. And it's going to cut off the bottom of the skull here. And we want the fill type, this is usually set to no fill. We want to set it to minimal. Because when we cut it off, it's just going to cut off and then there's going to be massive gaps everywhere. We want these those covered in, otherwise the model will fail. So we'll click on minimal and OK. <clears throat> and we've got two bodies there again. So we just untick this one. We can see we've got our, our mould for pouring concrete into. So we've got a perfect copy of the outer skull with the inner skull with sort of the minimum amount of wasted printing material in your 3D printing. The next thing we need to do is, this is still a um, solid object, don't worry about these weird freaky lines in the model, it's, um, they won't be there when you print it. So we need to again do a plane cut to um, cut these lines in half. So. Uh, in some shows they probably have some method to get this <clears throat> done perfectly this isn't that type of show this is the get shit done show so we're just going to move this object around until it lines up to where we want it it's going to be about right it doesn't have to be perfect so if i get click on my body and then move it across to where i think it's about the middle we're trying to line it up with this blue line that was there It looks about right. And okay. And we do another plane cut. So we click on plane, plane cut, select our body. Our cut plane will be this one here. And it's just showing us where it's going to cut it. And okay. So we've got another body now, <clears throat> if we remove that, hide it, we've just got to try and do the same thing with this. So we're just going to rotate the object around to line it up with that plane. And it looks pretty good to me. Click on OK, and we do uh, a final plane cut, click the body, click the plane, I'm going to cut it on, and OK. So now we've got our three pieces that we're going to print to make the mould. Oh good. So that's the model made. Now we need just give you a few uh, just give you a few tips on how to print it properly in Cura.
Okay, so when you print it using Cure, you want to avoid um, printing with this side down. I mean, I printed one with side down, and you've got a bit of elephant foot, you've got a bit of curling, and you, want it, you want it flat. So for this one, um, I found that if you rotated it on its end, <clears throat> Like that, it used it printed really quick. Well, it printed quick, and um, the inside was perfect, and the side was flat. So you want to avoid um, printing on the baffles, manifolds. So this one, um, this side's probably not so important. Nice well, would be for this one because it's the top. So this one you want to flip right round. And print it like that. So this side and this side don't um, <clears throat> get damaged printing onto the bed. I mean, if you've got a real dial from the printer, it probably doesn't matter, but it's printing for a long time. Fourteen hours. In this one you could probably you wouldn't want to do it that way because of the amount of material you would use for supports so maybe that would be the way to go just keep those faces which you want to made up perfectly not damaged I mean I'm going to use a cardboard gasket on mine anyway just to make up those variances uh, but just when you do create anything like this try and keep the, the mating faces as smooth as possible so file them off the printer and then see what we get out In case I print all these objects out, I didn't follow my own advice from the last uh, section. I printed them on the manifolds and they went perfectly flat, but we've got to really sort that out later. So here I'm just uh, dr drilling the holes wherever I think is a good place for the holes to go and the screws to go through. Um, I don't think it really matters, I think it is more the better. And then I've assembled the whole thing kind of like what it's supposed to look like when it's done. But I want to paint the inside with some um, paint. So I painted this and sanded it back about six, six or seven times because I wanted a nice, smooth uh, finish on the inside. So I've got all the bits sorted out here, uh, ready to go. And before I go to assemble it, I want to print off some card, cut out some cardboard sort of gaskets. So what I did was I created just the uh, first couple of layer lines of where the mating faces are and just grabbed an old sort of cereal box and drew the outline and then um, cut them up so they would fit in so it's a nice sort of tight seal you can see they're just slightly but you want to make sure on the inside that there's no cardboard material poking into this into the uh, inside because it is I'll work for you later on to tidy up. Okay, so before we get into the cement mixing part of this uh, project, just a note of caution to be careful with cement. Uh, you don't want it in your uh, lungs, you don't want, definitely don't want it in your eyes. I've heard lots of urban legends about things that have gone wrong. I don't even want to Google it. So if you're going to use cement, uh, wear gloves, wear um, goggles, respirator, you see all these tradies out there just throwing it around, but uh, it's, it's, it could be pretty dangerous. So uh, let's get on with it. So there's a couple of types of cement, this one here, which has already got sort of aggregate or stones in it, with also with a bit of fiber. It's good for making, for strong um, concrete, but we just want nice smooth concrete so the stuff isn't much good. So let's 
Just watch out for that one. It's just, uh, I haven't used it for another project, so it's not a problem, but it's just to reinforce steel concrete. And this is just general purpose cement, and you'll see it's just sort of like a, a fine, really fine powder, and that's the one you want for this. So we'll um, grab some of this stuff and mix it up. So I'm just mixing up the cement here. You don't have to use special water, it's just a water jug I have in the uh, workshop here, and just pour it in. Um, and just, I just do it by eye now. There's probably some measurements on the side of the packet, but I just pour it into I think it looks good. And just um, grab some other object and mix it around. <coughs> Obviously, I don't mix that fast, I go it on fast forward, but you sort of mix it up and just make sure you get all the bits scraped around the edges and get everything sort of um, mixed up together. And it's sort of like a, a paste, really, sort of a thick paste. And hopefully that video angle there gives you a good idea of what it looks like. The thing with mixing is you obviously create lots of the other bubbles, which you don't want in your um, your moulds. So if you try and sort of get rid of those, it would be good. It's, it's pretty hard to do, but um, when we pour it, I suppose a little bit of a, of a trick is that you um, pour it really high and just give it sort of a really uh, narrow sort of band and you'll see on the edge there all the bubbles are popping as it um, goes into the mold which is what we want. You, you won't be able to get 100% of the bubbles out but I find even if, if you had something like a, uh, a little sander off the side and just run it on the edge of the mold it'll actually make all the bubbles rise to the top also which is good but I didn't do it in this case. And the other thing I didn't do in this case is I should have sprayed um, some oil just some cooking oil on the inside as sort of a mold release. Here I found when I did the first mold um, the concrete expanded and cracked along the edges so here I'm just as a test I cut up a pool noodle so if the concrete wants to expand it'll just crush the pool noodle rather than crush the mold hopefully. And you can see already it's only been a few minutes and this concrete was starting to set so I just tape it down into place and leave it overnight to um, see it. See you the next day. Uh, it's definitely crushed that pool noodle. I'll just go through here and um, remove all the bits and pieces, all the screws. I put it into a sand container. Uh, I mean I could have made up a bracket but if I put it in the sand I can sort of move it around so it's sort of level. Um, it's a bit of a hassle because all the screws fell out into the sand but it's not a major. And Pretty much pulled the whole thing apart and with all the screws and bits and pieces. Once these are out, it was a case of trying to get them all apart. Um, if I put the cooking oil in there, it would probably be all right. So, just to make it a bit easier, I just ran around the edge with a hammer just to try and <clears throat> Knock the cement away from the mould. It's nice and shiny in there, so it shouldn't be too hard. And you would have just noticed on the top there my uh, support material because I printed this one uh, this way up. So it was just a case. This side actually came up pretty easy. Give it a couple of good taps and uh, up it came. And of course, a bit more persuasion with the. Um, it was actually still hot, so the concrete cement was probably still working. There's quite a bit of heat in there sitting in the cold workshop so <clears throat> probably still a bit of curing going on and then for the other one it's just a bit of persuasion with a hammer just lightly. I don't want to crack the mould again and the other side as well. What I should have actually done is the manifold for this one should have been sort of vertical rather than horizontal so that's a lesson learned for the next one. It's come out pretty good because some seam lines there which uh, when the concrete's this sort of state it's actually like really soft wood so if you just run sandpaper over with it, a few holes, air yeah, bubbles unfortunately, run some sandpaper over it and you get rid of all those lines. It comes out really good. So here he is. Uh, he's got a, a few air bubbles in him, like I mentioned when I was pouring the um, the cement. So I just need to work on that a bit. Maybe get a um, vacuum container or something and just 
slightly air bubbles out, but he's he looks pretty good. The only thing I would do, because I mean we have the seam lines if you watch the other part of the video, and just sandpaper gets all that clears up really well. So the only difference I would make for the mold is rather than um, have the seam line going that way, I'd have it go that way because in hindsight it makes perfect sense to do it that way and it's no sense to do it the other way. But um, it's definitely possible and you get a good result. Aside from that, thanks for watching.